Hi everyone! As you can tell from today's video title, it is going to be a very fun video where I talk about dresses that I have purchased because of someone else. And that someone else is a very prominent figure in the Lolita fashion community. It's Misako Aoki. Wow. This video idea came from the beauty YouTube side and is the YouTube made me buy it, except I've adopted and adapted it to Lolita fashion. And so you get this video. There are a lot of iterations of this video that I could do, but I figured Misako Aoki is one of the most prominent figures in the Lolita fashion community. So we'll start off there. For those of you who are unaware, Misako Aoki is a Japanese nurse and Lolita fashion model. She started modeling in 2001 for the now online only Kara and unfortunately no longer publishing gothic lolita bible. In 2009 she was deemed as a kawaii ambassador and is currently the president of the Japan Lolita Association. So she is a very big deal in the Lolita community in terms of spreading the style and influences. She's done a lot of overseas appearances and is considered one of the faces of Lolita fashion in Japan and abroad. I love Misako, she's one of my role models for Lolita fashion and she is a very sweet and kind amazing human being that has made me buy a lot of dresses. So enough about Misako Aoki and her career as a model and me gushing over her. Let's talk about the dresses that she has made me want to purchase over time. I've chosen video examples of her wearing these pieces just because videos are a primary way of seeing the texture and how the dress moves in person as compared to a stock image. So we'll start off with one of the oldest videos that I always come back to time and time again and this is Misako touring Baby the Starshine Bright's Daikanyama store with Tokyo Rebel. This video was released back in 2011 and the video brings back a lot of nostalgia because the Daikanyamo location doesn't exist anymore. They moved to Harajuku so it feels very nostalgic to have her tour that very small store in video. The dress that she picks up in this video is one of my all-time favorites and she's also wearing it in this video as well. It is Baby the Starshine Bride's Dessert OP. I love it so much. I have three different variations of this dress and I am still on the lookout for one more variation. But her picking out this dress and styling it, how she did, showcasing her own coordinate, I basically fell in love with the simplicity of this dress and the cut and how perfect it is for the summer months. And I still go back to this video just to relive the nostalgia and the memories that I have. This next video is another video that Misako did with Tokyo Rebel and this time she toured the new location of Baby the Star Shine Bright in Harajuku. So this was filmed in 2013 and she tours this location of Baby the Starshine Bright with Idori Fukusawa. She is also another amazing Lolita model who has been modeling for quite some time as well. The dress that Misako is wearing is Baby the Starshine Bright's Whiz Me Over the Rainbow and I have had that cut before that she's currently wearing. However, at the moment I have the other cut which I like even better than the one she's actually wearing. But Whiz Me Over the Rainbow is a Wizard of Oz print that is so gorgeous and lovely. I'm not someone who's actually super interested in Wizard of Oz themed items. However, once Misaka wore it, I knew I had to have it. Absolutely gorgeous and I love how it looked on her. In this video, in 2013, Misako released Lalitina, her song that she made. And in this video, she was wearing this dress specifically in a different cut. And it is Baby the Starshine Bright, fall in love with the sweet scent of cologne. How I found this out, despite the fact that this MV only has close-ups of her face, is the cut as well as this this photo that I found on her Facebook page. So she actually has the cologne version, which has a different bodice cut, and I actually have the perfume version, but the print is still the same. It features a girl's vanity with stuffed animals, perfumes, and definitely something that you don't really see a lot nowadays, especially with the prints and the cut design, especially with this boat neck for the perfume version of this JSK. That is one dress that 
I absolutely adored. The next two dresses I'm going to talk about come from the same video and Misako did a whole video series with Kawaii Patin back in the day when they were just starting out and this video is the eight fashion styles for Lolita fashion. And this video was released in 2013 but in that video she showcased a traveling outfit and that was Ron Ron Mimine from Baby the Star Shine Bright. Once I saw it featured in that video I knew I had to have it. The dress is more texture based and perfect for traveling so I see why she picked this dress specifically for a traveling Lolita look. It's simple, you can easily do it up or down. I absolutely adore the pockets and there are hidden cat charms in this dress as well. The patterning of the fabric is just absolutely gorgeous in this dress and really once Misako modeled it I knew I had to have it. The second dress that was featured in this video is Lurgetter's Parfait JSK. This dress leans more into the Otome style however I love the motifs for it and I eventually found it from a swap meet in Kansas City when I was there for Paradiso. I got the OP however it is still quite as comfortable as Misako makes it out to be and I just loved how she styled it. It's got some lovely parfaits and the fabric has a little sheen to it that looks quite luxurious and it is one of the perfect dresses to wear for the summer months. So this last dress I saw in the Kawaii International Lolita photo book with Misako and in this video she talks about Lolita fashion itself and how it gives her strength to continue with her day and she was wearing this dress, which is, this is Baby the Star Shine Bright, Arietta OP. And Misako stated in that video that she really loves this dress because it focuses more on the fabric, the texture, and the silhouette of Lolita fashion. And once I saw it, I knew I had to have it. This is definitely a very underrated release from Baby the Star Shine Bright, especially in a very print heavy, obsessed fan base group. The textures in this video just made it look like such a very interesting dress that would fit with my wardrobe. And surprisingly, these dresses actually go for quite cheap on closet child. I got mine for under $80 Canadian, which is really, really good, especially for an OP. So those are the dresses I'm going to feature in today's video. Let me know if Misako Aoki has ever influenced you to purchase a certain piece or dress for your wardrobe. I would love to hear all about it. Also, let me know if anybody else has actually influenced you to purchase a certain piece or print. My friends are also really bad influences as well. So if you're interested in hearing about that, let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, thank you for watching today's video of me ranting about how awesome Misako Aoki is and how she's influenced my purchasing decisions. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! A fun side note, I was actually able to meet Misako Aoki back in 2016. She was asked to attend a local convention. I have a whole vlog about it. I will link it in the cards up there down below somewhere. It'll be around. And oh, she is such a sweetheart in person. Like she is someone that I strive to be. Also, lately she's been modeling for Innocent World and her and Midori Fukusaka, like, don't they give off just great gay vibes? Every time I see their Innocent World twinning photos for the catalog, I'm like, oh, oh my god, they're so cute. I want to be just like them one of these days. Oh.